Hey, I'm Dex, a product specialist with Jamstick, and in this video, we're gonna jump into the Jamstick Creator and take a deep dive into its layout and utility purposes. First, let's go over how the user interface operates inside the plugin. Starting on the default screen, the very top panel will allow you to open different tabs that access different portions of the app. When you click one of these icons, the middle section of the plugin will now be displaying that tab. So for instance, if I click Calibration, this window will now be showing the calibration panel. If I click Browser, I can now see the preset browser, and so on. If I deselect the selected icon, and you'll know it's selected because it will be highlighted in blue, the panel will default to displaying what's on the instrument rack. We'll go over the instruments and effects racks in depth in part two, but for this video, let's just focus on the user interface. In the very upper left, you'll see the Jamstick logo followed by a gear icon. This tab is how you access the global settings of the creator. Inside the global settings, you'll see it's divided into three sections. On the left, you can toggle your MIDI device mode, access your device settings, and modify the pitch bend range of the Jamstick Creator itself. So if you're using any third-party hardware with the Creator, you can match the hardware settings here in the software. We'll jump into what these terms mean shortly, but for now, again, we're just focusing on the UI. In the middle box, you have a nice shortcut to accessing your audio and MIDI preferences. When using the Creator as a standalone app, it's important to select the correct audio input and output device, as well as selecting the Jamstick as the MIDI device. Underneath that, you're able to set custom MIDI CC assignments. For instance, if you're using the Creator with a secondary MIDI device, like an Akai MPD or a foot controller or something like that, you can teach the Creator to use those pads to switch presets. Moving on to the far right column, you're able to assign any of the macro knobs to hardware as well. Again, if you're a little confused right now about any of the terminology, that's okay. If you stick to the end of the video, hopefully it'll all make sense. So we've covered the global settings panel. Uh, now let's move over to the right and take a look at the device settings panel. Inside the settings window on the far left under MIDI settings, you can toggle your MIDI mode between single channel, multi-channel, and MPE. Most users will usually be switching between MPE and single channel. MPE is the Jamstick Studio's native device setting, so if you're using your studio with the Creator, standalone, or in your DAW, we recommend selecting MPE. MPE stands for MIDI Polyphonic Expression. The best way that I can explain that to you is on this MIDI keyboard right here. If I play this chord, and I want to apply a pitch bend to it, you'll notice that every note rises. Well, what if I just wanted one note to change pitch? That's MPE. To demonstrate MIDI polyphonic expression, I can show you on this Jamstick using this classic country blues kind of bend. You'll notice that only the top note bends, while the note that I play on this B string stays the same. If we weren't using MPE, it would sound something like this. Like this. But using MPE, we're able to play both, but only bend one string, and that comes across in the MIDI. The way that MPE can achieve that result is by assigning each note its own MIDI channel. This MIDI language, so to speak, translates beautifully to the guitar. Each string now has its own individual MIDI voice capable of very closely replicating the specific nuances of the electric guitar from slight pitch variations all the way down to the physical decay of the guitar strings. The other MIDI mode you might want to get familiar with is single channel. Single channel is great for plugins, DAWs, and hardware that aren't quite equipped to handle MPE. Lastly, multi-channel has more specific use cases, but if you want to do something like create guitar tabs inside Logic Pro, multi-channel could streamline that process. Below the MIDI mode, we have a toggle for pitch bend send. If this is turned off and then you record something, the Jamstick will not capture that pitch bend information. So if you're having trouble bending, you might wanna see if this is on or off. Below pitch bend send, we have pitch bend range. The range determines how many semitones a string bend will cover. Many soft synths and hardware synths have a pitch bend range of plus or minus two, while many MPE-enabled instruments have a pitch bend range of plus or minus 24. If you're using the Jamstick with any third-party software or hardware, you'll want to make sure that the settings on the guitar match what the software is looking for. To the right of the pitch bend range, you have access to some transposition functions in octaves or semitones. Something to note here is that this is a digital transposition, so it's only affecting the MIDI notes being output. 
This is different than say changing the tuning on your guitar. To use these functions effectively, keep your guitar tuned to the tuning that you've set in the settings to the right. Above that, you'll find a toggle for expression tracking. Remember how I said MPE is capable of remembering the physical decay of the guitar string? Well, that data is represented by expression. Turning off expression tracking is definitely a go-to for troubleshooting any issues that you might have with third-party software or hardware. And lastly, in this MIDI settings section, depending on what MIDI mode you're in, you can change the MIDI channel your studio is using. This is handy for any hardware that only wants to accept an outside controller on a specific channel. When you're in MPE, MPE uses channels 2 through 7 and reserves channel 1 for global information. Moving on to the right, we have a sleep timer and a master string sensitivity slider. The sensitivity of each string can also be tuned individually. It's important to note that the setting does not change the MIDI velocities of the Jamstick data, but rather how responsive the Jamstick will be to legato playing or more nuanced playing. Below the string sensitivity sliders, we have a custom tuning setting. So if you wanted to play in drop D or something, you would first tune your guitar to drop D. Uh, we have a built-in tuner in the calibration window, but we'll get to that shortly. And then you would inform the creator here. There's a list of more common alternate tunings in the dropdown, and if you don't see what you're looking for, you can punch it in down here as well. It's important to know that the guitar must be within a half step of the set tuning for the note to be registered. Moving on to the far right of the device settings panel, we have a column for advanced settings. Here you can toggle Bluetooth on or off, reset string sensitivity, reset tuning, and then a hard reset to factory settings. Lastly, on the very bottom here, you can run a quick diagnostic on the guitar to get important system information like firmware model, battery level, and battery diagnostics. So this device settings panel is definitely one to know and love. This is a super handy little section of the app because any change that you make here is actually a firmware change. So these settings will remain on the instrument after you close the app. This also means that if you do something like turn off Bluetooth here and then go and try to connect to the play portal via Bluetooth, it wouldn't work. You would have to come back here and make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. Moving on to the right, we have the calibration panel. On the top of the window, you can check the calibration of your device's MIDI pickup by plucking each string individually. If you make any modifications to your physical MIDI pickup, definitely jump in here to make sure that your pickup is registering velocity appropriately. On the bottom of the window, you have access to a guitar tuner. This is more handy than it may appear on the surface because otherwise you would have to plug the quarter inch audio output of the Jamstick Studio into your interface uh, or tuner to check the tuning. But this tuner is capable of working straight over MIDI. It's also really important to make sure that the guitar is in tune frequently. It's important to remember that the Jamstick is not just a MIDI controller. It's a fully functioning guitar, and like most guitars, it's meant to be played in tune. Moving on to the middle of the top panel, we have a display of the currently selected preset, as well as arrow keys to quickly punch through the presets while staying on whatever window you currently have open. Next, we have a save function for making new presets. Once you're done making a new patch, you can name it here, and then if you hit save, that patch will then be added to the user folder of the preset browser. You also have the option to export the patch as well. You can use this to save the patch to a different location, share presets with friends, things like that. To the right of the save icon, we have the preset browser. In the upper left of the panel, you have a new button, which will bring you back to the default patch, which is a single sine wave. Next to the new button, we have load and save. Load is how you can import any new presets, and then save is still save. Can never have enough of those laying around. Okay, now for the bulk of the browser window. You'll see it's divided into four parts. Starting on the left, you can refine your sound search by type and then instrument. These are essentially just filters to help you find the patch that you're looking for as quick as possible. Of course, you can just leave these on all, and then the presets column will display all of the presets. The far right column displays the macro knobs for whatever preset you have selected. We'll go over macros in depth in part two, but essentially macro knobs are capable of holding multiple selected parameter values from things like effects and oscillators. For example, maybe this macro knob would be controlling the wet value of the reverb and the delay effect. So when the knob is turned to zero, no reverb or delay will sound. As you bring the knob up, more reverb, more delay will start to sound. Pretty cool, and also a great way to quickly tweak a preset to fit inside your mix better. And then above the macro display, we have a search bar where you can search for a specific preset by name. Okay, to the right of the browser panel, we have a MIDI panic button. 
Depending on how powerful your computer is, every now and again, you might come across what's called a hung or stuck note, or maybe one note just continuously sustains regardless of what you're doing on the controller. If something like that happens, just smash this panic button and it will essentially perform a hard stop and reset on all MIDI information being communicated between your jamstick and the computer. And lastly, on this top bar, we have a master volume slider to control how much gain is coming out of the plugin. Moving down to the bottom left of the plugin, under the creator options, you can set your global tempo. This is useful when using time-based effects like delay, and if you're using the creator in a DAW, you should also have the option to sync the creator with your project tempo. In the bottom middle here, you'll see two graphic displays, a fretboard and a keyboard. As you input notes, they will input here as well. And lastly, in the bottom right, we have quick access to those digital transposition tools and window resizing options. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a pretty good understanding of what things do and how you might want to use certain functions. In part two, we'll dive into the rest of the creator by making a preset from scratch.